right guys so we are at episode 4 of maverick mastery cat 2024 in this quick episode we are going to look at some questions on critical reasoning now many of you might ask me ma'am why are we doing critical reasoning critical reasoning is not asked in cat it comes in non cat well critical reasoning questions are disguised as reading comprehension questions in cat so there are questions in reading comprehension that look a lot like which one of the following can be inferred cannot be inferred which one of the following can be concluded cannot be concluded which one of the following has been suggested by the author which one of the following is the author most likely to agree least likely to agree or disagree with which one of the following is a discrepancy in the author's argument this is also seen right so critical reasoning questions are disguised as reading comprehension questions in cat and the elimination technique is pretty much the same so anybody who would like to increase his or her accuracy in rc should do a considerable number of cr questions beforehand at least 100 or 200 questions right and they would see an immediate unless their linguistic skills are question they would see a serious increment in their accuracy levels in rc because they have done cr critical reason so let's look at some questions of critical reasoning first question let us look at the argument first it is difficult to keep deep wounds free of bacteria what is the assertion it is difficult to keep deep wounds free of bacteria even strong antibiotics fail to kill the bacteria that live in such wounds because they are deep wounds strong antibiotics are also not able to kill the bacteria however the counter premise is many physicians have succeeded in eliminating bacteria from deep wounds by packing the wound with a sweet substance like sugar so the passage starts with an assertion that it's difficult to keep deep wounds bacteria free the passage goes on to talk about one method that ideally should have worked antibiotics and the failure of that method and then the passage goes on to give the prior, last assertion which is sugar might help you know being wound being packed with sugar might help okay. what is the question one second what is the question being asked which of the following if true would most help to explain why treating deep wounds with sugar is described above as successful now if true questions are not inference questions in if true situations everything is hypothetical so let us not come up with an explanation which says but iske bare mein to passage mein baat hi nahi hui ho sakta hai paancho ke bare mein baat nahi hui hai right we have to see what is most directly related to the premises given hmm? what do we need to prove we need to prove which of the following what do we need to come to we need to come to an option which will give us a reason or give us an explanation behind why treating deep wounds with sugar could be successful bacteria option a bacteria that live in deep wounds thrive in a moist environment and sugar has dehydrating effect check sugar that is nearly pure is readily available for use in medical treatments now are we asserting or concluding on the basis of availability of sugar the answer is a big fat no so even if it is true even if sugar is more accessible you know pretty accessible that still does not explain why treating wounds with sugar is a good idea right c says many kinds of bacteria can use sugar as a nutrient and will reproduce rapidly when sugar is available this is the going opposite no we want the bacteria to die not reproduce rapidly this cannot explain why sugar should be used on wounds this says some foods that contain sugar can weaken the effects of certain antibiotics 
Well, we are talking about sugar's effect on bacteria. That is the conclusion. Sugar, bacteria, the wounds. Hmm? We are not talking about sugar and antibiotic. These were two different methods, one of which failed, one of which succeeded. It is not because of the interplay of these two. Strong antibiotics were developed only recently. At this point only, you should remove this. Dates back to ancient times. Is it about timing? Is the passage talking about how recent this development is or how ancient this practice is? No. We have to directly hit the main idea why treating deep wounds with sugar is a successful thing. A is the correct answer because A is actually giving you a reason. What is the reason? Bacteria that live deep, live in deep wounds, thrive in moist environments. Sugar has a dehydrating effect. So sugar can make the wound become less moist. Less moisture would mean that the bacteria is not able to thrive. And hence, treating deep wounds with sugar may be a good idea. That's how the elimination process would go. So the next question asks us, so let us read the argument first. Early in this century, Alfred Wegener developed the concept of continental drift, like continents are drifting apart from one another. So Wegener was the person who gave this revolutionary idea. When? Early in the century. Last century, actually. I'm sure this is an old question. His ideas were rejected vehemently because he postulated, postulated, he asserted, theorized. Theorized. Because he postulated no identifiable force strong enough to make the continents move. So vehemently means strongly. So he did give the idea of continental drift, but his ideas were strongly rejected because he could not give a he could not find or give the a force strong enough to make the continents move. So people were like, Achha, continents drift, how? Where is the force coming from that is making continents drift? So people did not believe him. People vehemently rejected his theory. We have come to accept Wegener's theory now, not because we have pinpointed such a force. So it's not like we have accepted it now after so many years that yes, continental drift happens, true. But it's not because we have been able to find a force strong enough to make continents move. No. But because new instruments have finally allowed continental movement to be confirmed by observation. So the problem remains there only. What Wegener could not pinpoint has not been pinpointed even now. But at least we have instruments which are confirming the drifting process may not be the cause, we may not have the cause yet, but the process is confirmed now. We have instruments. What is the question? The passage best illustrates which of the following statements about science. The aim of science is to define the manifold of nature within the terms of a single harmonious theory. C. Manifold of nature is not taken up in the passage. Single harmonious, single theory to we know, but single harmonious theory, there is no data to support this in the passage. So option A is gone. B is saying in accepting a mathematical description of nature, science has become far more accurate at identifying underlying forces. A to we have not found the underlying forces. B, mathematical description was not given. The passage does not illustrate mathematical description or our ability or accuracy in identifying forces. We have still not been able to identify the force behind continental drift, right? 
the paradox of science is that paradox is contradiction contradiction science is that every improvement in its measuring instruments seem to make adequate theories harder to work out no absolutely not the new instruments have made it easier to accept continental drift not harder completely opposite to what the passage is saying because of the new instruments we are able to accept it more wholeheartedly it not the other way around since employing statistics and laws of probabilities concerned not with the single event but with mass behavior again completely out of scope and out of context statistics not supported not illustrated laws of probability not supported not illustrated but e i tell you ladies and gentlemen when the events a theory postulates events being continental drift are detected the theory is accepted even without an explanation the force of how those events are brought about hmm? when the events a theory postulates are detected so because the events were detected na it was confirmed that continental drift happened because of the new instruments so it was accepted without an explanation of what made it happen how those events are brought about so e will be the correct option yes next question the theory of military deterrence deterrence as in when you are prohibiting or discouraging discouragement military deterrence was based on a simple psychological truth the fear of retaliation retaliation is to attack back makes a would be aggressor nation hesitate before attacking and is often sufficient to deter it altogether from attack so military deterrence is what when you have a military in place which can make a potential attacker think twice before attacking you that if i attack there would be retaliation and i might lose they have the military with them right so it is often sufficient to deter it altogether from attack just imagine if india did not have the military i shiver to think what china would have done anyway clearly then to maintain military deterrence conclusion our nation would have to be believed to have retaliatory power so great that a potential aggressor nation would have reason to think that it could not defend itself against such a retaliation to iska matlab seedhe seedhe ye hota hai ki military deterrence ko maintain karne ke liye in order to do that अग्रेसर नेशन को ऐसा बिलीव करना जरूरी है कि अगर मैं अटैक करूंगा तो इतना भयंकर रिटेलिएशन होगा कि मैं अपने आप को डिफेंड नहीं कर पाऊंगा सो आई शुड बी स्केर्ड ऑफ दैम तभी तो मैं नहीं कर रहा हूँ ना अटैक है ना सो ग्रेट दैट अ पोटेंशियल अग्रेसर नेशन वुड हैव रीजन टू थिंक कि देयर मिलिट्री पावर्स आर प्रिटी ग्रेट if the statements above are true विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग कैन बी प्रॉपरली इन्फर्ड प्रॉपरली इन्फर्ड मतलब किसके लिए डेटा है would be aggressor nation can be deterred from attacking only if it has certain knowledge that it would be destroyed in retaliation by country yep yeah, this is a good option this is a good option but only makes it extreme aur bhi koi cheez ho sakti hai jiske bare mein hamare paas data na ho passage mein to only nahi bola hai na we don't have the word only in the passage and the passage says that defend itself not completely destroyed again not supported by the passage not supported by the passage a nation will not attack another nation if it believes that its own retaliatory power surpasses that of other tab to wo karega na it is opposite 
it will attack if it feels that its own retaliatory power surpasses that of the other nation. This is also not true. This is the opposite. One nation's failing to attack another establishes that the nation that fails to attack believes that it could not withstand a retaliatory attack from other nation. No, this is again a very good option. But we don't have data for failure to attack. You don't have data to attack, do this. But because we have not used such extreme words like they're failing to attack or whatever, right? We have used very mild words I would have reason to think. Phrases like these we have used. It is in the interests of an It is in the interest is pretty diplomatic language. Just like we have a reason to think. From a nation that seeks deterrence and has unsurpassed military power to let the potential aggressor against it. Become aware of its power and retaliatory attack because it's about the power of belief. A nation would have to be believed to have retaliatory power to ye to infer kar hi sakte hain ki unko pata to ho ki hamare military mein kitna dam hai. Then only they would be deterred from attacking us na. Kind of makes sense why 15th August and 26th January we see a lot of flexing happening in terms of our defense ammunition and force. So D would be the correct answer. Maintaining maximum again, maximum deterrence is extremely, ex extremely extreme. D. Show the people what you have so that they are deterred. Often sufficient to deter it altogether from attacking. Right. Next questions. Fines levied against those responsible for certain environmentally damaging accidents are now so high that it costs a company responsible for such an incident more to pay to pay the fine than that it would have to cost to adopt measures that would have prevented the accident. Therefore, such business value, their profits, those that might have had such accidents will now install adequate environmental safeguards. So the premise is paying fine is more expensive than adopting measures. And because companies understand profit, this money they are going to adopt the measures because this is a better option, financially speaking. What do we have to do? Which of the following, if true, would most seriously weaken the argument? We have to weaken the argument as in we have to prove that the company, that the organizations or the businesses will not adopt the measures. Which option will help us? If true, which option will help us get to this conclusion? in spite of the premises being given. E says businesses are leaning to exploit the public's environmental awareness in promoting themselves. It's not about their promotion. It's about adopting measures to prevent future accidents, right? Adopting measures. So. He is not touching the passage tangentially also. Businesses that treat fines that are levied against them as an ordinary business expense. How could that? Could be. If it is ordinary business expense for them, then they might not adopt the measures. This is, let's keep this in the parking lot. Businesses generally do the environmentally right thing. Only if doing so makes good business sense. Well, even if that happens, they would still adopt uh, measures because adopting measures is also happening. Saving, saving money is also happening. So C is a win-win situation. We have to weaken the argument. Businesses that are concerned with long-term as they are short. This is not even touching the passage again. Irrelevant. It's not about long-term or short-term strategies. It's about whether or not they are going to adopt the measures. A saying businesses generally greatly underestimate the risk of future accidents. 
if this happens, it's better than B. Because it is directly refuting. D is indirectly refuting. B is directly refuting your conclusion that, yeah, yeah, in order to save money, they will adopt. Because they would have to pay a lot of fine now. So they would adopt the measures because it's cheaper. But if businesses generally greatly underestimate the risk of future accidents, they would not be scared of the fines. If they would not be scared of the fines, they would not adopt the measures. And hence, the conclusion falls flat that they will now install adequate environmental safeguards. No, because they're not scared of fines anymore. Because they're greatly underestimating the risk of accidents. Yeah. They're like accidents hong any. That happened. Last question. Water vapor evaporated from the ocean. So if this is the ocean, water vapor evaporated from the ocean contains a greater proportion of oxygen 16 and a smaller proportion of heavier oxygen 18. Come and Sada. Then does sea water. The sea water may, the proportion of 18 is pretty high, usually. Normally, this phenomenon has no effect on the overall composition of the ocean. But it does not change the overall composition of the ocean because evaporated seawater returns to the ocean. It comes back. Rain. So it is replenished. Hmm? Through precipitation. During an ice age, however, the, a large amount of pre precipitation falls on ice caps. But if the rain doesn't fall into the water, it falls on the ice caps where it gets trapped. Hmm? Which one of the following conclusions about a typical ice age is most strongly supported by the statements above? So which one? In me se kaun sa conclusion ice age ke liye such hoga, which is supported by the statements given above. The proportions of oxygen 16 and oxygen 18 are the same in vapor from seawater as in the seawater itself. Wo to pehle hi bola hai na? Different hai. It has been stated explicitly that it is different. One second. One second. So one is gone. He says the composition of seawater changes more slowly than does in interglacial. Slowly or rapidly ka to data hi hai. This is also gone. During the ice age, more of the earth's precipitation falls over land than falls over the ocean. No, we can't say that. Ice could be on land also and ice could be floating on water also. We can't say that. Conclusively, we can't say that. Rain and snow contain relatively more oxygen-16 than they do in interglacial period. No, it was snow maybe, but rain, we don't, we don't know. Hmm? We don't know that. Interglacial or periods or ice age, mein to, they should have... Whatever happens, I mean, relatively more oxygen 16 than what? Interglacial periods. Rain and snow may. The question is about seawater. Seawater may kitna hai? 16 and 18. But B will be the correct answer. Kyun? Because more if so, this 
we can assume that when it is evaporating, O16 is more, O18 is less. So O16 has been taken away. When it is precipitating, then this is going back, O16 back to the same level, up. Hmm? But if O16 goes and gets trapped in the ice caps and doesn't come back, then it is understandable now that the concentration of the O18 in seawater is increased because it never came back. It was taken away by evaporation, but it never precipitated. So the overall composition is now compromised. You understand? That's how you do critical reasoning questions. It may critical reasoning questions can make you sharper. They can help you reason better. They can help you eliminate better, which are critical skills for RC. Yes, RC is not all about English and domains. It's also about reasoning. So I'm going to give you four questions for practice. You can take a look at them and uh, solve these questions and you will get the answer key in the description box below. Question number one. Question number two. Question number three. You can pause and attempt the questions. Question number four. And finally, question number five. Thank you so much for joining in, everyone. I'm going to see you in episode number five. Hope it helped you. Hope you liked this session. Leave a comment in the comment section if you would like me to cover any particular topic. And uh, let's meet again. Bye. Happy learning. Mm -hmm.